Countersinks and counterbores are two sides of the same coin. They're both made to cut seats for fasteners so they sit flush with or slightly below a surface. The fasteners in question are different though. Countersinks cut a tapered hole for flathead machine screws, while counterbores cut a straight sided hole with a flat bottom for socket head cap screws or hex cap screws. On prints, these features are often abbreviated as C-sink or C-bore. Countersinks come in several angles. 82 degrees is the angle used on imperial flathead screws, while 90 degrees is used on metric flathead screws. 60 degree countersinks are used to cut a seat for lathe centers on holes that already exist, such as in pipe and tubing. If you work in aerospace, you'll undoubtedly come across 100 degree countersinks, since those are used extensively in aircraft construction. Of course, countersinks are used for more than just cutting seats for fasteners. They're regularly used for deburring holes, as well as chamfering. They can be used to chamfer not only holes, but also to chamfer the edges of parts on the milling machine. In addition to the various angles, countersinks have different shapes to the cutting edge. There are single flute, multi flute, and zero flute varieties. Single flute countersinks have the most space for a chip and are generally less prone to chatter, so they usually leave a better surface finish. Multi flute countersinks can be found in three, four, and six flute versions. These tools don't have much space in the flutes and are usually ground with zero rake angle for that reason. This, combined with the fact that one of those cutting edges is probably going to do most of the cutting due to uneven grinding, makes them very prone to chatter. Zero flute countersinks have the cutting edge formed by a hole drilled through the tool. This naturally forms a curved cutting edge with a nice rake angle for smooth cuts. These are an excellent choice for deburring holes, especially in sheet metal, where other types of countersinks tend to actually raise a burr. There are some rules of thumb to follow with countersinks that will help you get better results. Know that all countersinks are very susceptible to chatter because there's a lot of contact between the tool and the part. Because of this, they should be run at slower speeds, generally 300 RPM or below. Prints may not give a dimension for chamfers and countersinks. It's common to see instructions like break the edges on all holes or C-sync for a 1032 screw. For undimensioned chamfers, common practice is to assume a 45 degree angle on the side of the hole, a 90 degree countersink, and give it a 32nd to a 16th of an inch of chamfer, around 1 to 2 millimeters. If a depth is not called out for a countersink, make sure the screw is flush with the surface, or preferably slightly below, up to about 15 thousandths. The screw head should definitely not sit proud of a surface or it may affect the fit of parts. Also, countersunk holes start looking bad if they're too large for the screw head, so take care not to go too deep. As mentioned above, counter bores are to cut pockets for socket head cap screws and hex cap screws. In addition, they can also be used for an operation called spot facing, which is used on rough surfaces like forgings or castings to make a flat area that is perpendicular to the hole. Without this, the head of the bolt would be sitting on an uneven surface and could bend or break when tightened. Counterbores have a pilot on the end of the cutter to keep it centered on the pilot hole, which is the clearance hole for the screw or the bolt. This pilot could be solid or interchangeable. The advantage of an interchangeable pilot is the ability to use a larger counterbore with a smaller hole. This is necessary when counterboring for a hex cap screw because the socket that fits the bolt must also fit inside the counterbore. Just like drills and reamers, counterbores are available with both straight and Morse taper shanks. Counterbores can be quite fragile in the smaller sizes and they're rather expensive compared to drills and end mills. Because of this, care must really be taken when approaching the workpiece, especially if you're spot facing. They should be run at an RPM one-third less than that of the same size drill and use plenty of cutting oil. 
I know someone's going to ask about this particular counterbore set, and this is something I got on Craigslist about six or seven months ago. I'm not sure if this company is still in business, but it's a pretty slick little set. It's an interchangeable counterbore set. Uh, so you can actually take these cutter heads out, and they're spring-loaded. There's a couple of tabs on each of the cutter heads that fit in these two slots, and the pilots are interchangeable as well. Uh, you can switch them out between the different cutting heads and each one fits into the same holder. The box these came in has an absolutely horrendous case of the disintegrating foam syndrome and the cutter heads uh, are just absolutely covered in the thing so they can be a little difficult to put into the holder. If anyone has any good solution to cleaning these things off, please let me know down in the comments. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button down below, and let me know if you've got any questions down in the comments. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.